When drying plastic granules, there are four important factors. Drying temperature, dry airflow, drying time, and dew point. We have dedicated an entire episode of Moe's Corner TV to these factors. Today, we want to take a closer look at the most difficult and misunderstood of these factors, the dew point. The drying of plastics before forming is an important step, as it prevents problems with quality. How much residual moisture a specific material can contain is usually specified by the manufacturer. The problem, most plastic granules are hydroscopic. This means that they absorb moisture like a sponge. This water must be reduced to a particular value in order to achieve the best possible quality in further processing. In order to understand what the dew point is, one must know that the air can absorb different amounts of water moisture depending on the temperature and pressure. The higher the temperature, the more water can be absorbed by the air. This means that every temperature has a corresponding maximum capacity of water which can be absorbed. Now one just has to differentiate between the absolute amount of water and the relative humidity. So, like I said, the air can absorb water and how much depends on the temperature. The relationship between the water actually present in the air and the absolute value of water that can theoretically be absorbed at this temperature is called relative humidity. We know this from the four seasons. In summer, it's sometimes warm and humid. The air has a high moisture content. In winter, however, the air outside tends to be cold and dry. 100% relative humidity means the maximum saturation of the air with moisture. An example, 100 degree hot air can absorb a maximum of around 600 grams of water vapor per cubic meter under normal conditions. Zero degree cold air can absorb a maximum of around 4.8 grams of water per cubic meter. Both values represent 100% relative humidity for the corresponding temperature. When we've achieved the 100%, the air can no longer absorb any moisture and the water will drop out of the air if we were to cool the air down any further. The temperature at which the water would drop out of the air is called the dew point. If one plots the maximum amount of water for one cubic meter of air in relation to the temperature in a chart, one gets the following curve. The dew point is the temperature threshold below which water condensates and above which the water moisture absorption rises. So, to put it simply, the point at which condensation and evaporation is perfectly balanced. For example, if you wear glasses and enter a humid room from outside, the temperature of your glasses is above the dew point. The water in the air will condensate at the coldest point, in this case the glass. It will go from a gas state to a liquid state. This is why your glasses missed up. Back to plastics. In material drying, the dew point plays a crucial role. Moisture is removed from the material in the drying bin by blowing pre-dried, warm air through the bin. The water in the material is absorbed by the air and then by the drying agent in the dryer. The lower the dew point is, the drier the air. There are many types of granules that can be overdried. Overdried granules are also a problem for processing because, for example, the viscosity may be too high to fill small cavities. The lower the dew point I generate is, the more energy is required to remove the moisture from the air. Therefore, dew points that are too low and are not beneficial to the process can result in material damage or problems during processing. At the very least, it means higher energy consumption than is necessary. Normally, a dew point of minus 20 degrees is suitable for the drying of most hydroscopic granules. This corresponds to a residual moisture content of 1.1 grams per cubic meter of air. Just like with all drying parameters, it's most important to find the correct balance between quick and gentle drying for each material.